Good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the final European outlook of the working week. It is Friday. It is the 23rd of August and we are rapidly approaching the end of meteorological summer. Certainly for the last several days, it has not felt like summer at all. In fact, uh, much, much more uh, like autumn as opposed to summer. Very strong, powerful jet stream aloft. We've got areas of low pressure running along that, uh, the remnants of Ernesto passing through. Then it was followed by uh, a deepening system, Storm at Lillian, thanks to um, the uh, basically the, the remnants of Ernesto kind of laid the tracks for this system. It, it imported a lot of warm tropical air northwards. It increased the thermal gradient here, increased the strength of the jet. That system then developed at the base of the trough, which has been deepening over the last several days. Um and then what happened was the system that became Lillian um, developed, crossed over to the cold side of the jet, then it allowed it to deepen. And uh, essentially what happened is you can see on this medial seal chart here, the animation playing through. There's uh, the system that became Lillian um, during the course of last night and through the, the overnight period here. Seen a lorry cross, attempted to cross over a bridge, I think it was in South Wales, and it looked as if it was about to tip over due to the strong winds. So there, you can see here the centre of the circulation passing across, say, the heart of the Republic of Ireland through the Irish Sea, the centre crossing over the north of England, and then moving into the North Sea, and now it's pushing in towards Denmark and southern Scandinavia. But that system um, associated with uh, very strong winds in the southern flank We've seen wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour in a couple of spots here, causing some damage in a few sp uh, places as well. And obviously we've got um, uh, trees still in full leaf as well. So 50, 60 mile per hour winds cause a lot more damage in August as opposed to December and January when you have no foliage on the trees. I also want to mention before I forget, uh, there, I mentioned last weekend that there will be no live stream this upcoming weekend. But in fact, I have actually changed my mind. There will be a live this weekend. It's going to be broadcast from Newry in Northern Ireland. I'm going to be over visiting my gran along with my dad. And uh, I've decided to do a live stream. It's going to be at half past seven in the evening. So a slightly different time this weekend. But nonetheless, there will be a live stream this upcoming Sunday at 7.30 p.m. So... Uh, just to, to let you know that the, there will be a link in the description below today's video for that live on Sunday evening. So I hope you can join me for that. I'm looking forward to uh, broadcasting it from a different location once again. A fortnight previous, it was in Rio. And uh, this upcoming weekend, it's going to be in Northern Ireland. Doing a fair bit of travelling at the moment here. And obviously with my work, I am up and down the A9 to Glasgow and back each night. So... Busy times here with uh, marfoganweather.com, but nonetheless, no matter where I am, I'm continuing to deliver um, accurate, unbiased, unhyped weather content here on the channel. So I certainly hope that you can support by hitting that subscribe button. It would be much appreciated here. Plenty of things coming up as well in the weeks ahead. We're going to be looking more and more at uh, winter, the prospects what the teleconnections are showing at this moment in time as well. So plenty of reason to stick around here on the channel. So that system rattled through during the overnight day last night into today, uh, bringing some very gusty winds indeed. Uh, these are the wind speeds in kilometers per hour. So I want to um, just skip quickly back and you can quite easily and nicely depict the gusts on the southern flank of the system as it moved through. Not so much in the way of windy conditions across the northern UK, but once the system now exited into the North Sea, we're seeing the backside winds associated with Lillian. But you can see here as we move into the uh, 10, to 10, 10 to 3 UTC during the overnight period, very little in the way of winds, if you notice here, even across Northern Ireland, Southern and Central Scotland, even the north of England as well. But notice here that we started to see the brighter yellowy colours showing up here, representative of strong gusty winds. And then as the centre continued to deepen as it crossed the north of England, we've seen the core of strongest winds then move into the Welsh coast here. We had 
wind gusts in excess of 100 kilometers per hour along the west coast there. So that's a 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts here. And then you can see the core of strongest winds moving through mid and north Wales into northern England here. And then across over the, the Pennines, uh, as it crossed over the Pennines, we had some winds accelerating over the tops of the high ground here down towards the, the eastern side of England here. And then we've seen uh, wind gusts in excess of uh, 90 kilometers per hour along the, uh, the the Yorkshire coast here, Lincolnshire, etc., etc. So that swathe of strong gusty winds moved through, albeit rather quickly, I must say, but they did leave a legacy of damage in their wake. So, um, so yeah, it has been an interesting night of autumnal-like weather, despite the fact that uh, it, we are still in meteorological summer. Let's actually quickly look back, actually, at, uh, at the temperature profile during the same period. be interesting to see, because I noticed here at one point last night, temperatures were in the upper single figures across the north while they were sitting at around 19 Celsius. So this is the same time frame. This is 10 to 4 UTC. Uh, let's skip back just a little frame or two here and see. So you can see here relatively cool or fresher air across the north. We had warmer air across the south. And then as the system moved through, we've seen those temperatures generally hovering at the upper teens to around 20 Celsius at 10 to 5 UTC this morning. So that's a big old contrast here between upper single figures in the southern uplands, for example. Then once you moved into the midlands of England here, we're talking about mid to upper teens. And then a couple of spots down across the far south hovering around 20 Celsius. So the contrast was quite substantial here. We've got a strong jet core running right across the heart of the, 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 the UK at the moment here. Fresher air to the north, warmer, more humid air to the south here and it's actually that gradient that the that, that the system ran right along here um during the last uh, 12 hours or so here so quite interesting meteorology uh, playing out over the last uh, day or so here and essentially ernesto ran up the western side of the atlantic basin as i said to you way back last week when i was in brazil the the, the ridge of high pressure was centered over the azores extending up into the southern uk once Ernesto rounded the bend of the, the belt of high pressure over the central Atlantic, we would see the core shift from the Azores back westwards towards Bermuda here. Because obviously there was a, a weakness in the high over Bermuda. We've seen the system run that weakness up through Bermuda, up the western side of the Atlantic Basin. And then as the system then rounded the top of the high, we've seen the core of the high centered near the Azores, over Iberia, delivering for some very hot conditions here. That then shifted west and allowed the trough to deepen over the northeast Atlantic, extending from Iceland down over the UK and Ireland. And essentially, that has played out almost perfect. It, the, the, the image that I had in my head, it's basically done uh, what I thought it would do. So um, very interesting stuff, I must admit. And I hope you're finding it interesting as well here. Looking at rainfall anomalies, this is for the past 24 hours. A little bit hard to see. I do apologize for that here. But this is a 24-hour rainfall total. And essentially, again, where the center of the low moved through, you can see the swathe of heaviest precipitation. Drier across the north, drier across the south. These are the 48-hour rainfall totals here. So you can see here in excess of 50 millimeters across southern Scotland. Northwestern England, we've got the 60 plus millimetres of rain over the Cumbrian Fells, for example, no surprise over higher ground. And in the past 72 hours, these are the rainfall totals here. So the, 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 the moisture has certainly been building up over the last several days here as one system after another rattles through. Now, another interesting factor to take into consideration is the fact that the past seven days, has been rather cool. That has been expected. And what it's doing is it's chipping away at the warm anomaly that we started off with. During the first week or so, 10 days of the month, we had a fairly warm August. Now things are starting to cool down somewhat. And you can see 
that we've got the blue anomaly shown below average across the northwest of the UK here, warm than average across the southeast, but we're chipping away at that warm anomaly that we had built up during the first half of August here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out. I do think that August will run warmer than average, but what may be more important about this cooling down of August is the fact that we firm up the likelihood that June, July and August combined is going to be the first consecutive three summer months below average, I think since 2015. So that's quite a significant thing when you think about it. Nine years since the last time we've seen a below average June, July, August combined. And this cool autumnal type of pattern that we're seeing at the moment is certainly helping reinforce that likelihood by the way another interesting thing to look at here is it looks as if we've got another stratospheric warming situation taking place over antarctica now i'm going to be looking at this hopefully in the live stream this upcoming sunday at what this may mean there has been times in the past that various scientific outlets have tried to link the southern hemisphere winter with the northern hemisphere winter and we've had a minor stratospheric warming that took place back in Jan uh, not january back during the heart of winter down in the southern hemisphere and uh, we had a very very significant warming that has been taking place over antarctica it looks as if we're going to see the warmest august on record for antarctica but uh, it looks as if the models are suggesting another stratospheric warming so this is actually looking over the the over Antarctica here, you can see the strong warming here just offshore here. And then if we skip on, this is uh, moving out to 264 hours, you can see that that warming intensifies and displaces the polar vortex over Antarctica here. And it'll be interesting to see what influences that has. Now, when I was down in Brazil, we were talking about 35, 36 Celsius. Then a frontal system moved northwards and replace that 35 with 20 Celsius and heavy rainfall. Then the days after that, cleared up, nice and sunny, but temperatures were much fresher. And it was due to a northward push of a cold front moving out of Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, into southern Brazil. And I wonder if that was the side effects of that stratospheric warming that took place about a month ago. We've got another stratospheric warming that looks to be taking place here and it looks as if this is reinforcing that warm anomaly that we've had built up over antarctica in the last um you know the last few weeks or so here so it looks as if we have a stratospheric warming once again taking place over the southern hemisphere and if we look at the 10 millibar level over the northern hemisphere you can see here that we still have the easterlies the, the 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 lack there's no polar vortex over us at the moment but while we see the stratospheric warming taking place potentially over the next couple of weeks in the southern hemisphere if we go all the way out to 240 hours which is 10 days from now you can see a little shadow of green showing up here and the modeling is suggesting that the winds start to reverse in the next week to 10 days over the northern hemisphere so it looks as if obviously with days growing short nights growing longer the cold is now starting to grow over the arctic it looks as if the the the, the polar vortex over the northern hemisphere is likely to regenerate once we come through the next 10 days or so here so it looks as if the polar vortex within the northern hemisphere is going to start um, cranking once again here if we skip all the way out to 384 hours from now this is way into september this is natural climatology by the way you would expect to see the polar vortex begin to start to develop winds changing from easterly to westerly and essentially this is the beginning of winter within the northern hemisphere in the next couple of weeks here but like I say, I'm going to try and look in the in the in the upcoming live stream here at any kind of connection between 
the stratospheric warmings that we've seen during the course of this past summer up here, winter down in the Southern Hemisphere, if that has any connection to the upcoming 2024-25 winter. So that's going to be discussed all being well on Sunday evening here. And, uh, and yeah, we'll be talking a lot more about winter coming up as well. So where are we going? As we move towards the final days of August, there has been rumours of something much hotter or at least warmer developing into the final days of August, beginning of September. Now, it actually would not be surprising if we see something develop here in terms of warmth, shifting trough that's currently centred over the UK and Ireland, moving westwards, and higher pressure building up from the Azores, Iberia, France, into the UK here. Up until now, the heat's never reached the northern UK. That's one thing that I have to to be honest with you. Hottest temperatures here at Marfogan Weather HQ is actually back in May, believe it or not. The warmest temperature of the summer is 24.1 Celsius. And I know there's a site in the West End of Glasgow that's not even recorded 24 Celsius this summer. So we've had, uh, what, three waves of 30 degrees Celsius or above in the southern UK. It's never quite made it up into the northern UK here. Do we have a last ga gasp temp? at seeing the warmest conditions seen since May up across the northern UK. We'll wait and see what happens. But the MJO is actually heading into phases four and possibly five. So that is the core of, a, of enhanced convection within the tropics, shifting eastwards towards the maritime continent. What that does is phases four and five can lead to warmer conditions over the eastern United States and western Europe. And if we look at the, the latest run of the GFS model here, this is an interesting one. This is it for London. Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit here. But you can see here that uh, the model is indicating that we have temperatures starting to rise quite steeply, may I add. Not this weekend, bank holiday for England, uh, Wales and Northern Ireland, I think it is. It's not for Scotland. Despite the fact that I'm off, but I work for an English company, so that's the reason why I'm off this weekend, hence why I'm going over to Northern Ireland. But this is for London off the GFS model, and you can see by the time we we move through next week, we're on a, an upward trajectory temperature-wise. So Sunday, 19.7. Monday, we've got uh, 21.4. We've got skip up from Monday to Tuesday, 21 to 25.6. Then look at this here, 28.8. Thursday, looks as if we've got 32 Celsius seen by the GFS. Then we drop back to 23.9. And there's another little climb coming up here, 29, 31.4. Is it confined just to the southeast? Let's look at Manchester. And you can see here, that the model has another step up process. So we've got relatively cool through the course of the bank holiday weekend. Then as we move into the day on a Monday, cloudy skies, 20 Celsius, so not particularly great. Even on Tuesday, 19.3. Then there's a sharp rise to 25 by the time we reach Wednesday. Skip up to 27.7 on Thursday. Then we have this drop once again. And again, like London, we've got this kind of climb as we progress through the first few days of September. This is off the GFS model. Obviously, there is other models out there. And I don't think the ECM is quite as, as aggressive as the GFS in terms of, uh, of heat. What about the north of the UK? This is Inverness. This is the GFS again. You can see here 16.7 on Monday. Notice here that the heat is not necessarily moving into the UK the northern UK, should I say, into the early portions of next week here. But then as we move towards Thursday, 19.9, uh, 18.2, uh, then we've got 20.5. It's looking as if it's only flirting with it across the north according to the GFS. Now, actually, the previous run of the GFS had temperatures as high as 23 uh, across the north of the UK here. Let's have another look at this. So I've made mention of the fact that the MJO is rotating 
into the maritime continent that can, not always, but can deliver warmer conditions, Western Europe, Eastern North America here. I want to show you something here. This is a little bit hard to see. I do appreciate that. But look at this here. We've got quite a stretched out. This is looking over the Northern Hemisphere, North America, Greenland, UK and Ireland, Europe. Obviously, Europe's kind of tilted in the chart here. I do apologize for that. But I want to show you something. Watch how we have now, there's the prospects of a typhoon over the West Pacific that is going to move up into Japan and then move northwards. With the combination of the Pacific, West Pacific typhoon activity and the MJO in the tropics moving eastwards, watch how the pattern within the 500 millibar level shrinks the trough over the Arctic region and it pulls the mean region over the middle, uh, the middle latitudes and lower latitudes northwards here as we progress through the next week. So this essentially is Thursday the 22nd. In the Friday, we've got an area of low pressure, deep low, almost centered over the North Pole, if you notice here. There's the trough that's anchored over uh, the northeastern Atlantic here that has been dominating in August, really, to be honest with you. But watch what happens here. We've got a lot of trough in us here over the western side of northwestern Europe here. The region here centered over the Azores here. Watch what happens as we play through the weekend and in the next week. Now, we've got a typhoon that's likely moving into the higher latitudes of the West Pacific here. But watch what happens with the, the wavelengths here. We start to shorten them. And essentially, the trough shrinks in coverage over the North Pole here as we progress towards the final days of the month here. Look at the difference here. We skip back. There's a lot more stretched out further south troughiness. Watch how the coverage of the negative starts to shrink and we start to see the, the, the areas of low pressure and troughiness pull northwards. So we're actually pulling the ridge northwards and it's encompassing more of the UK and Ireland here. That's quite interesting, I think. I hope you also find it quite interesting. Let's have a look and see what the GFS is showing over Europe here. Let's have a look at the Europe, the, the, the North Atlantic map, because I want to show you this in a little bit uh, clearer detail. I know it's a bit long drawn out today. I do apologize for that. But nonetheless, trying to show you the big broad picture, understanding why the pattern is doing what it's doing, why we're likely to see the changes also. So if we skip back to the here and now, you can see a strong jet, strong deviation between warm and cold here. We'll play through this loop, bearing in mind what's happening within the uh, tropics of the uh, away down the Indian Ocean maritime continent. Watch how the negatives lift northwards here and the UK is much more within higher pressure as opposed to low pressure. Looking at the 500 millibar anomaly here, you can see it in a bit of a clearer detail. The upcoming five days looks like this here. So there's the deep negative, but it is starting to pull slightly westwards here, by the way, towards the end of this five-day period. So we're seeing the, the core, the axis of the trough shifting west. But look at the difference in the day four through eight. We're pulling the, the negative to the west. There's region building over Scandinavia, but also further south building westwards towards the UK, the 6 to 10 day, the 11 to 15, we're starting to see the higher pressure building into the British Isles here. So we are seeing significant changes taking place. Real quick, let's have a look at the temperature anomalies of the GFS ensemble, and uh, we'll show you the upcoming five days. So we're going to maintain this cooler, fresher, west-northwesterly flow, charge, especially across the north and west during the course of the upcoming weekend. But those showers will start to ease off as we progress through the course of the weekend. We do actually have a frontal system moving in, by the way, and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in the next day or two. But we do have a front on Monday moving through. So we remember I showed you the, the temperatures um, here. This is, uh, let's look at London. You notice here that we see this rise, then fall, and then rise once again. Same for Manchester. A rise, 
fall, then rise. It's because we've got a system that moves in off the Atlantic during the course of Monday and Tuesday that brings heavy rainfall. But once that system clears out, as if higher pressure is going to try and build in. So finally, let's look at the uh, two meter temperature anomalies. Upcoming five days, cool and average six to 10 day here. You can see the warming trend, quite a notable warming trend as well, by the way. We've not seen that in quite a while, especially across more northern areas. But that's a big difference between the day one through five and the six to 10. So uh, MJO phase four or five, starting to show its hand, I think. Then the 11 to 15 day are still subtly warmer than average here. So the prospects of a slightly warmer start to uh, September, like we've seen in August, actually, is looking quite likely. So, been a long-winded video today. <laughs> I hope you have been able to stick around and, and listen to uh, all I've had to say. Like, share, and subscribe. Tropical Outlook in-depth tomorrow and then the live stream 7.30 p.m. on Sunday evening. So I hope you can join me for that. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and the upcoming bank holiday weekend if you are benefiting from it, of course. Bye for now.